Hey, welcome to a super secret episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. I told you I might, you know, do these uh, super secret hidden episodes. This is a hidden, a hidden episode, so I don't want to hear, oh, you're back doing beer reviews. No, this is a, a secret hidden video that only people who have had the links to this can see. And I said I uh, might review some special stuff I break out of the cellar. Well, tomorrow's my birthday. So I'm going to break out one night early the Founders KBS. I believe this is a 2011 vintage that uh, uh, Max Spang gave me in the trade we did uh, in the spring. So thanks, Max, for the beer. There was some kind of sticker, a price sticker on there on the pack. But, anyways, uh, I think, you know, when I had this, I had this for episode number 500. And at that time, and really up until this very moment, it's always been a toss up between this and Pawn of the Elder, or maybe Firestorm Walker Parabola, or some other, you know, even Southern Tier Chocolate, of just like what is my absolute number one all time favorite beer of all time, or what beer I consider the best of all time. Not really the same thing, but anyways. So I just thought, you know what, drink this with me and see how it stands up. So it's been well over a year, like a year and. Um, well, actually, it's only been like a year and a month or two, but anyways. Super black body. I mean, you should have seen on this pour, just one of those super black stouts. Not a whole lot of head on it. I could smell it as soon as I opened it, and I get like distinct imperial stout scent. I get like a, a sour grape on this. I get like a perfume. Mmm, black licorice, sour grape, like kind of perfume. Noticeable, like, kind of, like, booze kind of scent in there. Um, real, I get subtle, you know, dark chocolate, but let's see what I get in the taste. Cheers. <laughs> wow. Well... Maybe because this is a relatively fresh bottle. This might even be the 2012. Is this the 2012 edition, Max? I can't remember. I I cannot remember for my for the life of me. That being said, because this drinks more like a regular kind of imperial stout. Like I've had Founders Imperial Stout a few years ago. It was really good. Um, that's how this drinks. Like you get. Let me only take another sip here. Mm. Because I know this is made with chocolate and coffee, um, and it's bourbon barrel age. I mean, to me, this drinks like a rather, I don't want to say normal, but <laughs> a, a very, you know, familiar imperial stout. Um, uh, maybe I'm drinking it, it's, maybe it's just a little too cold. I mean, it's been out of the fridge for like 20 minutes, but it's still... Yeah, I'm getting condensation on the glass here, so it's still, you know, a, a little cool. Maybe I should drink this at room temperature. <clears throat> mm. Anyways, up front I get the the classic imperial stout taste, kind of like a dark, a dark cherry, almost like a wine kind of taste. Um, you know, like Stone IRS has this very similar palette to it. Um, through the middle, you get a little bit of bitterness. It's not a particularly bitter beer, even though it's, uh, what, 70? Yeah, it says 70 IBUs on the bottle here, but, I mean, when you have a beer this big, you have to, like, really up the IBUs to kind of balance it out. And I get significant alcohol in this one that I do not remember getting... Uh, last summer, um, I get like you know right. I get I definitely get the heat in the throat. Um, not that it's like a you know it's 11.2 ABV, so I mean yeah okay that's that's expected. But I could have swore I mean I have to go back. I didn't watch the review, so I'll have to go back and watch it. Um, I thought I didn't really get much alcohol, either taste or or sensation, and I get kind of both on, on this one. I 
I'm drinking it really slowly to kind of like concentrate on the flavors that I taste. There's a definite like syrupy chocolate taste in there. Um, it's not like a super sweet milk chocolate. It's more like a dark chocolate with like some bitterness in there. Like almost like a dark chocolate syrup, which I've I've never seen. So, um, the coffee. I mean, I don't really get like a ton of coffee. Um, I mean, you mostly just get it on the aftertaste. You have like the same kind of aftertaste in your mouth that you have after you like if you're drinking if you're drinking coffee. Yep. Really noticing that that kind of sour grape or red cherry or some kind of cherry or black cherry, something like that in here. A um, little bit of like a sourness to it. And I, I mean like a good sour. I don't mean like an expired, you know, old sour. This is, um, and it's, I mean, it's far from like a Flanders red or anything like that, a, a wild yeast. But there's like a certain kind of sourness in here. It seems, it seems less thick than I remember. It's it seems like a little bit of a you know thinner mouthfeel this time. It doesn't really coat the entire mouth. Hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, it's still a delicious beer. I mean, like I'm just kind of if it sounds like I'm nitpicking and criticizing it, like I'm not really. That's not what I'm really intending to do. I'm just kind of, you know, concentrating on what I get this time. Um, yeah, I, I gotta say, this is still an awesome, amazing beer. Um, I guess, I mean, this is the first time I've had this since, uh, since well, since the first time. <laughs> Remember that from American Pie 2? It's my first time since my first time. Uh, yeah, so this is the second time I've ever had this. And it's been about, you know, about a year, a little over a year since I last had it. So it's, uh, I'm just going off memory. And, you know, it's really interesting is that, you know, for such a huge beer, it's leaving lacing on the glass. That's it's beautiful. It's still very, very smooth. Super smooth. No fizz in the mouth. It doesn't feel flat or thin either. It doesn't feel thick and sticky. Like, I've had plenty of stouts that... It just feels like you're drinking a, a maple, or not maple syrup, like Hershey syrup or something. It's somewhere in the middle. I mean, it's got like a little bit of energy, but not, you know, it's not, I wouldn't call it fizzy. Um, I, I mean, actually, I mean, if you've been watching this, you might have heard, like, I'm getting CO2 stuck in the throat. It's really, you know, nice. I mean, we've had, maybe, you know, I've, we've had, we had a warm winter and a very hot summer this year, and this has been down in the basement for a few months now. I forget when I got this. Probably should have looked that up. There's a date on the bottom. No, it's just a code. I can't read it. I'm trying to read the. Oh, here it is. No, it's covered up by the sticker. I want to see the exact date and time this was bottled, but um, whatever. Anyways, I'm going very long here. So thanks again to Max Fang for the beer. Um, obviously this is still a 10 out of 10, but as of this drinking right now, it's not quite as absolutely mind blowing as I remember it, and you know, I'm going to drink Firestone Walker Parabola tomorrow night, and we'll see if that is, you know, as good as I remember, and if that's even better than this. So, uh, thanks for watching this uh, super secret episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. I'll see you whenever. Bye.